Do you have an idea that you think would be a great business and you want to bring it to life, but you know, maybe sometimes the administrative parts of getting a business started and getting it up and running feels a little bit too heavy. Well, if that's the case, I'm here to tell you that it's really not that hard to start a business. I am all about entrepreneurship and getting people to start businesses. So this video is all about what you need to do step by step to get your business up and running from an accounting and just an administrative perspective and a legal perspective. Now, I am not a lawyer. This is none of this can be legal advice, but I do want to kind of point you towards, you know, things that you need to do, a few things you need to consider if you're starting to set up your own company. Okay. So if that sounds good, please stay tuned. So you might be thinking, Hannah, I already watch you. I already have a business. I don't need to start a new business and that's okay. You know what I found about entrepreneurs is oftentimes if they have one business, they will often start another business at some point in time. So maybe this is not for you today, but you might need this information in the future. I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty evergreen, not going to go out. This, these steps are going to be useful for years and years and years. Okay. So I also will tell you guys that I am starting a new business. I'm not going to tell you all the details about it just yet, but I am starting a new business. It's going to be breaking off a portion of my current business into its own business. And so part of this I'm doing very selfishly because I'm going through this process myself, but I want to take you guys along that journey with me. And I'm going to walk you through some of the steps that I'm doing to set up my business. But first, I just wanted to give you that big overarching. Here are the things you need to think about before you get a business up and running. Okay. Well, if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, I would love to have you here as a subscriber. If this is the first time you're watching this video, cause you're just getting a business up and running. That's great. You're going to want to subscribe to this channel because this channel is all about helping you create a more profitable and financially sustainable business for your future. All right. So if that sounds good, please be a subscriber here. We would love to have you. And also know that you're always welcome to put comments and questions in the comment section below. I do try to read as many of those as possible and answer as many of the questions as I can. Okay. So I'm going to assume for the purposes of this video that you already have an idea <laughs> that we're not talking about, you know, maybe you want to start a business and you have no idea what it is and you need to do your market research and you need to go and like figure out what services you can provide. I'm going to assume that you've already done that piece because that's a whole different piece that can take years to come to fruition. You know, you need to know what your passions are and all of that, but I'm going to assume now that you have your idea, you're ready to go. You're just kind of stuck with the administrative piece of it. And what do I do next, Hannah? That is what I'm thinking that you're probably asking. And that's why you're watching this video. Okay. So the first thing I want to say is that, you know, your idea is there. You've maybe come up with a name or something that you're okay calling your business for now. I would say don't get too stuck on a name. Don't not start your company because you can't start a name. You can always change your name in the future or just adjust it and say that you're doing business as a different name. It's not a huge deal. I went through that a couple years ago. You can always start with some name and change it down the road. So don't get hung up on that. Now I'm going to say that step one is about going to your secretary of state or the equivalent should be the secretary of state for all states and forming your entity. So forming your company from the beginning, this is the legal aspect of the business. Okay. So this is where you say state, I am going to start something new. I'm going to have an entity, a new entity, and that entity is going to be the form of a company. And I'm going to set that company up and register it with the state. So the state knows that you're doing business in their state. Pretty important. And that is a process that for the most part, we can pretty much do that on our own. Most of us are going to start. If you're a service based company like mine, you're probably going to start as an LLC and you're just going to try to set up a legal entity that's separate from yourself. So that I, I do highly recommend looking into whether or not an LLC is better for you. If you're just thinking like, Hey, it's just going to be me. You might want to look into and consider an LLC again, not legal advice, but there are some good things about a limited liability company, which separates your business from your personal a little bit more. Okay. And you could also consider other entity types. So if you're starting a business with somebody else, you might want to look into a partnership or a multi multi-member LLC. You could start an S corporation or a C corporation. And then some business or some states will have other types of entities as well, like maybe a professional liability company 
or you can sometimes have a few additional entity types on top of those that I already mentioned, okay? So if you are not sure and you don't know, I would highly recommend discussing with a lawyer which one would be the best for you. So if you are confused, especially if you have somebody else starting a business with you, you're going to wanna to consult a lawyer and you're going, to, you're going to wanna make sure you have an operating agreement set up for your entity type, okay? especially if you have anybody else involved. Very, 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 very important. That first step is getting your business, your new business registered with your state, okay? Once you get that, you will be able to say, okay, I have some kind of entity, I have a, a legal entity name, and then the next step is you're going to want to go to the IRS website and get yourself an EIN, Employer Identification Number. This is a type of tax ID number similar to what we have for our personal side, which is a social security number, an EIN, is that number that is kind of like your business's social security number. So it's your business's tax ID number. And what that will do is it will help you go and use that to you know, pay employees in the future, to file your tax returns. It helps you separate from having to use your social security number. So even if you're just operating totally as a sole proprietorship and you're like, hey, it's only gonna be me, I'm never gonna employ anybody else, I still highly recommend getting an EIN because you don't wanna have your social security number all over your business documents. So it's a nice way to sort of separate and keep your business and personal a little bit more separate. And then you don't have your very sensitive information like your social security number out on a bunch of business documents all over the place, okay? So it just helps with that extra layer of protection. And then you cannot do certain things unless you have an EIN. Like you can't employ people if you don't have an EIN. Okay, so it's extremely easy to set that up. I'm going to do a video on how to set up an EIN on the IRS website, so stay tuned for that. I will show that and then when that's done, I will make sure it gets linked here. But very easy to do. Then once you get that number, you can start using that number to do some other steps in this process, okay? The third step I have for you is to apply for business licenses. So this might mean one business license, it might mean multiple depending on where you are, but for most of us, we're going to need to register our business also with our city or our county or kind of more of the local government. So you'll need to go and look and look in your city. And if you need to contact support, you can, but you might just read through and say, okay, what do I need to do? I just started a business. Most websites have pretty easy FAQs and things to say, okay, I've started a new business. What do I do next? So you can go and look and see what do you need to do. So in my little town where I am, I need to go and get a business license to operate in the town that I'm in, okay? When I lived in Seattle, I had to get a Seattle business license. So most of the time that's gonna be your city, but you could also potentially need other types of licenses. So are you a contractor? You might, you're gonna need to get your contracting license so that you can make sure that you can actually practice and do, well, I guess you don't use the term practice, but you can actually perform services as a contractor within a state. Or maybe you are in the beauty industry and you actually need to have licenses for that, or maybe it's something like you have, you need a reseller license in order to be able to buy things wholesale and then resell them at a store or anything like that. So you might need to go a couple layers deep and understand what types of licenses you will need in order for your business to operate. Oftentimes your city can help you, like your city or even your secretary of state can help you figure out what types of licenses you need to be aware of for your business. Okay, so these business licenses are important Important because sometimes you can get in big trouble where really you can get in trouble if you're operating without a license to operate a business okay so sometimes we don't really realize that we've stepped on that and usually you can ask for some forgiveness if you did your due diligence and then you still didn't get the right license but the idea is that before you really start operating in your business you do need to be licensed to perform services or to sell goods whichever one it is okay 
So that is number three to apply for business licenses. Step number four is to open a bank account because you're going to need some money. You're going to need some cash flow in order to operate your business. So you need to have when somebody pays you for something, you need to have a place to put it. And when someone and when you need to spend money, you need to have a place to put it. So when you first start your business, you're going to be, you know, I'll probably starting with money that you've put into the into the business. So you want to set up a bank account and you need to put that money into a separate business bank account. Sometimes I see people operating their businesses out of their personal bank accounts just because administratively they didn't know what they were supposed to do. And please, 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 please do not do that. You will set yourself up for failure if you're commingling your personal and your business funds. What you want to do from the very beginning before really, I mean, really before you're spending any money in your business, you need to get a business bank account. Now we can make it really easy these days. It's very easy to go into a business, go into a bank and get a business bank account. You have to have your employee, your EIN or some kind of tax ID in order to open a bank account. And then you also are going to need probably your state registrations as well. So all of that stuff that you've done up to this point, your secretary of state filing, and then your EIN, you will want to take that to the bank with you if you're going in person physically into a bank to open up a bank account. Now we do have the ability to also open virtual bank accounts now. So you can use something like Relay, which is a banking solution that allows you to open up a bank account without ever having to go into a branch to do so. So if you're doing that you could easily get your bank account set up and go ahead and fund it and get you can fund it from your personal account get that recorded and then you can start operating your business out of something like relay if you want to do that and have that virtual option but if you want to go into a branch and you want to have a relationship with a branch of some kind of local business or a national with some type of local bank or national bank you can go and find the the bank i recommend looking around finding somebody that you like um, learning about what they offer looking at what services that they have and what other financial tools they might be able to offer you down the road but you know, ultimately you need to get something set up. So I recommend just getting started with something and then you can kind of mature into other products as your business grows. Okay. But the number one thing is make sure you get a business bank account set up. This is like my PSA for any new business owner. <laughs> make sure you get a business bank account set up. It does not make sense to not have one. And then if you've done all these other things, you have the paperwork to be able to go and get a business bank account. All right. Lastly, I want you to set up an accounting system. Now, all of these things, the registering your business, getting the EIN, getting your business licenses, getting your bank account, those are things you need to do pretty immediately. I want those to be in pretty quick succession. Like if you're if you're registering your business within a month, I want you to have your business bank account, okay? That needs to be very quick. Now, if it could happen even faster, I want you to do that. Now, that's what I'm saying. Accounting system should be done soon it doesn't have to be done in the rapid succession of everything else sometimes people just need to get their business open before they really start having a lot of transactions when it comes to using that new bank account you know charging things on a credit card bringing in money so there's some time, some for some of you you're not going to need an accounting system on day one however most of us are going to need them within the first couple months. So I recommend going ahead and getting set up on an accounting system. You know that we love QuickBooks Online here, that you can take a look at our code down below where you'll get 30% off of your first year with QuickBooks Online, but you need to get an accounting set up, accounting system set up fairly soon after you've opened your, your business. But you know, if you operate for a couple months and then you get an accounting system set up, anybody, you or anybody helping you, like a bookkeeper or something, could easily pull in all of your transactions from day one and get that set up into the system um, fairly easy and quickly. So I'm giving you a little bit more space. You have a little bit of time <laughs> to get an accounting system set up, but do it fairly quickly. Now, one word of advice, if you're going to do QuickBooks, that do not get the QuickBooks self-employed or solopreneur or whatever they're calling it. Do not get that version of the software because it does not scale. It does not go into Simple Start or Essentials or Plus. You cannot ever upgrade that. 
it is kind of like a different type of accounting system and it's really only meant for solopreneurs. So do not get that one, please, because as your business grows, you're gonna need additional features. I recommend starting with essentials because you have the access to be able to add an accountant to it and you're not having to use like shared logins. Essentials is really like where I recommend people starting. But if you are going there, just know like don't use <laughs> don't use the uh, self-employed. None of us accountants like the self-employed product. We like QuickBooks Online, but do not use self-employed product. Use the Essentials or Plus or Advanced. Now, you're probably not gonna need that when you first start your business, but look into Essentials as being probably like a great place to start, especially with that extra discount that you have if you use my code, okay? Now, if you don't wanna use QuickBooks or something just yet, and you're like, hey, I'm just, I'm this is a side gig, I'm not, don't have a lot of transactions, I think like, you know, a handful of transactions every month, if that, you might wanna look at something like a spreadsheet. So my friend Jamie Troll has a downloadable financial system spreadsheet. So you can put in your transactions and it will create a profit and loss for you, which I think is fantastic. So I'll make sure to link that below. However, I would say that like, that's great for a little while. If you go and move into something like QuickBooks later, I would recommend pulling all your data from the very beginning of your company through to whenever you start using the QuickBooks because you want to have that history in your system so that you can go back and say, okay, what were our transactions like last year? So you're still going to have a little bit of bookkeeping to like get everything up and running. I wouldn't recommend a spreadsheet for too long or it's okay if like you're really, really small and you never are trying to make much more than like, you know, ten to twenty thousand dollars a year. But once you start to get into multiple tens of thousands of dollars a year, you're really going to want to go ahead and get all of that information into an accounting system. Okay. All right. So let's just recap real quick. First thing, you know, you've got a business idea. That's you're coming into that this video with that. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your secretary of state and you're gonna go set up your entity, your new entity type. You're gonna tell, you're gonna tell the state everything about you and the type of business that it is and then they're gonna give you some business ID numbers and they're going to give you basically a certificate of formation at some point once you're business, and that will say that your business has been formed. Then you're gonna to go to the IRS website and grab your EIN and then you're gonna make sure you're registered for any business licenses that you need then you're gonna set up a bank account and then you're gonna set up an accounting system, okay? So I hope that made it really easy for you guys. Hopefully that hurdle to get that next business started or to get the first business started has just been lowered a little bit more. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. And remember, none of this is legal advice. Talk to a lawyer if you are questioning and you're not sure which entity type you need to be or if you need help with any of the paperwork that goes along with the formation of a company, please talk to a lawyer. All right, thank you so much. Bye everyone.